I want to welcome you to the Termosphere Gallery, and I'm Dick Termos, and uh, I want to just sort of walk you through this a little bit and tell you about some of the different types of work that I do and talk about maybe how they're reproduced sometimes, how they're uh, returned into panoramics and the different kinds of things that I do. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of variety in this gallery. Most all of them do like a, they use a six point perspective system. And the six point perspective is, I, what I do is I imagine I'm in the sphere and I'm looking at an environment outside the sphere, a transparent one. And I look north, south, east, west, up and down, and try and capture all of that onto the sphere. But I'm really doing it on the outside of the sphere. So I mean, it's kind of a twisted your brain around uh, in order to deal with this a little bit. This is a more realistic piece, which I, you know, I think helps people relate to what I do, of Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, and what I did was I, if you think of this as north, south is over on the backside, east is here, west, and everything above you is in it, everything below you is in it. But in this case, I'm floating above the floor, like 70, 80 feet, up into the domes and seeing the whole world. To do this, I use a six-point perspective system. That's the only way it actually is possible to do this kind of thing. This is the same system of perspective, a very repetitive sort of pattern, but you can see the vanishing points really show up when they come around. And so if that's north, south is still over here, east is coming around over here, they're a little more pronounced than what you could see in the realism. Both, both of them use the same system, um, but uh, this one is playing with it as a fantasy, and the other one is a real place. And I've done lots of real places. I mean, Notre Dame Cathedral, Saint Chapelle in Paris, the Paris Opera. With that Hagia Sophia, I did the, like it in the Blue Mosque in Istanbul also. In England, I did Stonehenge and Shakespeare's Globe Theater, captured the whole interior of those. This is kind of a fun one. Think of yourself as floating out in a pond and looking all the way around yourself and looking at the reflection coming at you. That's what I was trying to analyze uh, was how does reflection actually work? And if you think about it, reflection comes right to your head, right in the middle there, and all of the lines projecting from the trees run right to that point. And then the quivering in water that you see in this is concentric circles that work out from that point. So I, I made all the reflection play off of that system or it couldn't be part of it, you know? And it, it actually looks pretty much like a true reflection looks. So I think it actually hit on something there. Um, so that's the, a couple of them that uh, play with more of the realistic stuff. You can see a black and white piece with optical illusions. If you look really close, it's really kind of fun because it'll go like a single line will run through this and it'll go from a white face here. The same line will turn into a face on the opposite side. And so I was kind of playing with that type of an optical illusion throughout this whole piece. So it has bodies and faces and all throughout this whole piece and one pattern will turn right into another, back into another. So it's really kind of fun. Here's one that has a white face coming around here to a, back, a dark face to a light face and it just kind of keeps going back and forth and back and forth. When I did this I thought it really would be easy. It's pretty complicated. This is another direction I like to play with and it's really pure geometry, uh, the geometry of the sphere. Uh, what I found is when you start to play with geometrical systems and patterns on the sphere, they're very unique compared to what you saw on the flat surface. There's like four spirals that actually spin in this and interweave with each other. And what I'm trying to do is, is make them just as realistic as I possibly can. But that's an area that interests me also, stuff that grows out of geometrical systems. So this is kind of an interesting one. I enjoy sometimes working with transparent spheres because I can do the inside of the sphere and the outside if I figure it out in the design while I'm doing it. So all of these open spaces between the trees, and you can see the top of the trees up here, 
and actually the roots of the trees. The interesting part to me too is now when, once you zoom in and you'll see all kinds of different animals and creatures that are living in the forest. Well, that all had to be done on the inside of the trees. So the animals and the background is on the inside of the trees. And I, what I do is I paint that first on the outside and I paint over it with a lot of coats of white paint. And then I paint over the top of the white paint with, to create the trees. So it's, it's done in, a, in kind of an interesting process. I've done quite a few different ones that play off of that type of system. Cool little world in there. So it's, you ne it's one of those that you never feel like you've seen the whole thing. And that to me is pretty important in, in artwork is to not have it just be able to easily be, oh yeah, I see that and you know it and you memorize it and you don't need to look at it again. This one you'll look at and look at and look at. This is kind of an interesting new thing that I played with. This was actually a, a, like a 10 year old boy taught me how to do this. <laughs> he was in, in the gallery here with his smartphone and he was standing in front of a sphere and uh, I said, oh, after a while, he was there for quite a while, I said, are you doing a video? And he says, no, no, I'm doing a panoramic. I said, a panoramic, you have to turn in a circle to do a panoramic. He says, no, you don't. He says, my camera doesn't know it's not turning in a circle because the ball's spinning in front of it. And I said, really? And he says, you want to see it? Well, I said, after he left, I said, man, you taught me how to do something. I'm going to Every time I do a sphere, I'm going to make a panoramic of it. This is the Pantheon in Rome that um, is from a sphere, and it's just holding the camera on it, and it ends up turning into that kind of a, of a scene of the Pantheon in Rome. This is one cubicle universe that's a really kind of an interesting one on a sphere, but it also is interesting once it flattens out into, this is like a four-point perspective. Um, this is one that, that's over at the Tri-State Museum in Belfouche and showing how it, when you flatten it out, that's what it looks like. So quite a few of these are, that's what, that's what that was all about. So reproduction is pretty important. This is the process that I had to go through when I first started to try and reproduce my work. And what I actually did, this is called the fish, fish eye view or like you're inside of a fish bowl. But it used to be a 16-inch acrylic ball with a seam in it. And what I had to do is paint it as just like I wanted it to be. And then and when I was done, pop it in half, take those two hemispheres, put them in ovens, melt them down to the flat. And it's both a, acrylic paints and an acrylic ball that it was painted on, so they melt at the same point. And so these are just melted down balls. And this is uh, St. Peter's Cathedral up on the top. Uh, that that's how I used to have to do it. So I had to wreck the original in order to get a, a reproduction of the piece. If I wanted to reproduce this particular piece, uh, which is, is a spirals and a fantasy world that goes on in it, I would, what I'd have to do is photograph it all the way around the sphere, many, many, in fact we do it 14 times, but it's no particular, but it should be precise enough to where you can stitch that all together and make a virtual sphere in the computer. So it actually now is a, is a sphere that's in the computer. And then once you get that in the computer, you can pull it apart and flatten it out just like what we were looking at before. So now I don't have to wreck my original, which is very, very cool. It actually can be done all through the computer work, and, uh, which is really an advantage for me. So this is an example of uh, what I can reproduce. These are simple silk screens, and this is a Pantheon in Rome, just in a one color and clear. I found it's really quite interesting to look at these because your mind will go to the back side and look at this and, and almost ignore the front when there's some motion to it. And this one is called the Six Senses, and the trees turn into the senses of man. So there's a visual sense, and there's an, a smell sense, and a, a, a taste sense, and an ear sense, or audio sense, and an eye sense, and then the, there's one on the top and the bottom too. But these are all single prints done with a single silk screen on the flat, heated up, blown into hemispheres, trimmed off, and stuck back together. But I want to show you another one that's more real, that's really kind of cool. 
So this is an example of how you can reproduce it in full color and everything. This is done with, through the computer to, to, in order to get this kind of a product. But it also is the help of an engineer out of California, uh, Bill French, that invented this type of motion that comes out of solar energy. So you can see it's rotating. This is uh, 24 scenes of the Black Hills. You can kind of, this is a panoramic that the little 10 year old boy taught me how to do <laughs> back in the background here. But this kind of gives you a hint of, of how this works. You can see that it's, it's so it's, I'm hanging on to a clear ball and there's a thin liquid inside and then the sphere that I printed is on the inside and it sits in there and floats and inside the, that ball are solar cells that pick up the light in here, power a little motor and keeps it turning all the time. So it just sits and spins all the time. But if we didn't have a way to reproduce it, we wouldn't be able to get to this. So th these are, you know, potentially any, any sphere that I've ever done could be done this way, but I do have to go through this company to get them reproduced. Uh, but it's kind of fun because uh, the tourists love it because there's like, you know, all the scenes back here from the Black Hills that they've just traveled around the Black Hills to see are all showing up in there. When you see this piece flattened out as a panoramic, you can kind of see things right in front of you a little bit easier. There's a motorcyclist in here that's kind of fun. In this birch tree right here, the front wheel of the motorcycle is right there, the little archway. And, uh, and the back wheel is right there, just that little part. And the head of the motorcycle is his blue hair there and yellow face. Remember the birch tree is what's outlining him. Front of the bike up here. And then the, all kinds of different Badland stuff. We've got Sitting Bull back here, a lot of Spearfish Canyon. Uh, some of the pectographs are arranged along the top here and they also show up on the top here the needles and the crazy horse, Rapid City's dinosaur on the hill, leads, a lot of lead in the background there. Um, some of Spearfish Canyon up through here, uh, Bridal Veil Falls, uh, the needles, and uh, some of the lakes around uh, the Black Hills. So, and even over into Hot Springs, this shows the, the mammoth, so it's, playing off of that. So there's a, a lot of different scenes of the Black Hills in it. Yeah, I do all kinds of these little guys here too that are, are fun little studies. The gallery is open to anybody uh, uh, seven days a week. We're anxious to open the door and let you in and to have you check things out. We have lots of items to buy if you want to buy things, little things, big things, very very big things like this. In order to find our place, we're just on the outskirts of Spearfish on, on 1920 Christensen Drive. But if you have a GPS, just put Thermosphere Gallery in, it'll bring you right to our door. We've got a parking lot right out front and uh, we invite people to come, come on in. And the website is thermospheres.com uh, and it just has tons of cool stuff on it. Uh, videos of things and all kinds of stuff. So I hope you'll check it out and come visit us. Thanks.